talk about efforts in the community to provide more jobs and opportunity and housing. We can do all that stuff. And then we can start, uh, you know, Sammy, can, you can bring in a couple of things that people might have missed out that's going on in the community. But we're going to have fun tonight. And, of course, we invite you to uh, join us at uh, 508-791-1310. Uh, and let me just say that tonight uh, we are broadcasting, simulcasting on 940 and 1310 WRC. But we're also videotaping for W uh, CCA TV 13. 13. So it's going to be an exciting opportunity for us. Thanks for joining Talk of the Town. Now, let's uh, let's get the show going on. You know, uh, what's happening, fellas? What's I'll happening tell you what's happening. happening. First of all, <coughs> Peter Stefan, from Putnam Graham Oney Funeral Parlors on Main Street. I think it's 885 Main Street. It's Graham Putnam. Yeah. Graham Putnam? Yeah. Oh, Putnam. Graham Putnam Mahoney. Oh, Graham. I stand corrected. Yeah. You know, I've you been there a few times. times. You look good. You look good to me. You look good. I Anyway, this is what the deal is. The deal is that they've had three voice boxes donated. Now, I know that sounds kind of strange for people, but sure. there are a lot of people out there that need these voice boxes, cannot afford them, and because of the way that our, that uh, Governor Romney is uh, chipping away at all the poor people, uh, you know, uh, there are some people now that are donating these things so that other people can have, you know, a voice. They can sure. talk, you know, and that's very important. So he has three of them that um, they're willing to... Um, get to whoever needs him, and he can be contacted down here at uh, 885 Main Street, and I expect him to be in studio. I, I, he told me he was going to be here. Sure. So I'm going to see him in here. Let's make sure the doors But I'll tell you something. Now, let's, let's let these folks know exactly how the voice boxes work. The voice boxes are not, they're not answering machines. These are things that are helping people speak who might have had cancer to throw or something that medically they, their voice box has been removed or altered. So this is a very important, uh, you know, item. It costs a lot of money, and, and uh, you know, where, where penis that in the ground, Putnam uh, you know, has made these available. This is incredible. You know, we help people by helping the folks do the things that we do. You know, this is a great one. Plus, I want to get in a, a mention that we are in need of cribs. Three years ago, I started a program uh, with the help of many people in this community called Cribs for Kids. In fact, Betty Gallagher, the former police chief's wife, was honorary chairperson of the event that we had for a year. And we raised about 25000 bucks, and we bought a whole bunch of cribs. And anybody who needed one got a crib without question. And the cribs went, they were delivered, I delivered them, we set them up. It was a great program. Now, those children are three years old, and some of them are transitioning out of cribs. I drive around. And whenever I see a crib put on the uh, trash bin, then what I do is I pick up that crib and I provide a new mattress uh, to someone who needs one. So we're putting out a call for cribs. Now, if you do have a crib that's in great shape, uh, a crib that's not really old, that's in really, really good shape, what we need you to do is we need you to deliver that crib up to the friendly house on Wall Street. And from the friendly house, we can get that crib out to a family that's in need. So that's, that's another thing. Now, if anybody else has any things out in the community that you'd like to mention, you know, we feel free to join us at 508 7 one 1310 It's important. Uh, you know, the, the kids are getting older, but there's a whole new group of folks coming by. We have many, many new folks who are what we call new Americans. No longer is the word immigrant politically correct. The word new American. New Americans? New Americans. You know, <laughs> politically correct is new Americans. Who came up with that? I came up about probably about eight years ago, and it slowly, like everything else, transitions into the city of Worcester. <laughs> so, so does well, that make me the old American? Well, I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, no. The, are we, we the old Americans? We are. We are the old Americans. We are the old ones. Now, yeah. listen, before we go to wherever we're going, I need to also mention that uh, Peter Stephan started that well, program, the uh, uh, for the, uh, the for drugs. The, for the drugs, yeah. Like for prescription, prescription drugs. And um, they've been helping an awful lot of people in the community now. There's a great need for that program. Also, um, you know, you can, you can make donations to that fund by contacting Peter there. That fund operates like this. Uh, there are a lot of people that find themselves in the crack between not having uh, um, insurance and waiting for some kind of insurance to kick in. Sure. In the meantime, things like insulin and, and, and you know, drugs that really support their lives, right. you know, they're not, they don't have access to. Right. And because of the, you know, the e economic um, environment we find ourselves in, not many people care if they live or die. Sure. You know? yeah. People like Peter care. Yeah. He started this fund, and people have been donating to it very generously. So if you know anybody that has a problem, whether it's an elder, elderly fo uh, folk or, or younger folk, get a hold of Peter. There's a way for them to um, make sure that they have their prescription drugs until the uh, 
the other coverage gigs. Sure. Well. Now, do you have Peter Stephan's telephone number? We're going to wait till he comes. We'll, we'll get it later in the show. Because, you know, I do have yeah. it. I didn't bring it in That's because okay. I thought we'll, he'd be here by yeah, now. We'll get it, we'll get it later. Yeah, yeah, let's get back to the cribs for kids. I know there's a lot of people with cribs down in their cell that are probably just collecting right, dust. Right, but these cribs, yeah, well, that's good. You that's know right. what I mean? Yeah, and, and, yeah. and they're thinking of maybe hold, having a yard seal and they hold it off. And yeah. maybe they, they'd be better used to donate it. Right. I, I pick them up on trash day. I pick up these cribs and then I make sure they have all the <laughs> nuts and bolts. I, I got to laugh. No, no, I'm not laughing at that. That's a great thing. You got to be commended for it. You see my van. I'm just picturing you jumping out of your van picking through the trash. No, no, no. When I see them, people put them to the side and they usually put a sign on them that says free. Yeah. But if anybody what does... What if it doesn't say free? That's okay. We take them in. <laughs> uh-huh. How do you think I feel when I'm riding shotgun when I'm in the st- slams on the brakes and okay. says, let's grab that crib right there, he says. But I'll tell you, if anybody does need a crib and if you have, or if you have a crib in good shape, uh, deliver the crib up to Friendly House or call Josephine up at Friendly House and we'll find a way Josephina. to get the crib to yeah. it. Nice yeah, matter of fact, uh, in October we'll be announcing there's going to be an event. I think it's October the 4th down at the Department of Public Health where we're having a safe babies night and the Worcester Infant Mortality Reduction Task Force along with the Healthy Start Initiative program is going to have a program where young mothers and families can come in and make sure their houses are safe for young babies. There's going to be a lot of giveaways, information, and light supper will be served. And that will be at like 5 o'clock uh, down at the Department of Public Health over in Is Diane called in? Yeah, Diane is here. In fact, we're going to write, go right to the phones right now. And let, let's give her a round of applause, okay, because she's, she's ace. Come on, here we go. Let's do it. His. Yay. His. Okay. His. Oh, I'm flattered. His. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We are speaking with Diane Williamson, uh, a ace reporter for the Worcester Telegram and Gazette. Welcome to Talk of the Town. Not. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks a lot. Now, now Diane, let's, let's talk, and I'll be the reporter side on this, because a lot of folks sometimes just just love to ask you a ton of questions. Now, you took the column over that you currently have now, which is yours, after Jim Dempsey had left the Telegram. Well, no, actually, it was when Paul Della Valley left. Oh, that's right. Paul. Paul went up north and started his own newspaper. Yeah, well, for, actually, first Paul went to um, run Worcester Magazine. Okay. And then he started his own newspaper after that. But, yeah, I had pretty big shoes to fill because he was a really wonderful writer, popular columnist. And, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Paul. Yeah, I forget about Paul. I used to <laughs> run into Paul down at, was it? there was a team down at the Centrum, the lacrosse team. Inside lacrosse team, we used to play around. That was a good team. Why did we ever team. get rid of them? Well, because Boston picked them up, you know. Yeah. It was the Blazers or something. Uh, yeah. All right, so tell me something. Okay, you did have, uh, uh, you, you filled up shoes and you changed the shoes. That column originates my understanding. Now, I ran into this guy, Jack Tubert, many years ago. Ah, yeah. Yeah, Jack. And Jack would say, uh, listen, uh, that column started back in the 50s, it was a, you know... Oh, yeah, well, Jack would tell you no one could fill his shoes. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, and, uh, but, but tell me the, the, the column and the tone of the column. But let's talk about you. How did you luck, luck out and get the job at the Telegram and Gazette? Well, I had kind of a circuitous route. I was... I you, could, wait a minute, what does that so work? What does that work? Wait a minute. You so listen, listen, this is, her, listen, this is Hermes Janus. I'm not, I'm not equipped in that area. What did you just say? She said circuitous. I know, but oh, what does that on. mean? What does it mean? Okay. You guys know the four and five syllable words, don't you? What, is, what does it mean? Yeah, you do. Okay. What does it but, um, anyway, we're out about, we're out about. Well, you know, I think I use those words because I was just going to tell you I got a job at the Telegram after I dropped out of college. Ooh. So I think I'm always just trying to kind of make up for that by using big words. So I don't uh-huh. know what they mean. Yeah. But um, I dropped out of college, and I got a job at the Telegram part-time. Okay. as like a gopher. You yeah. know, I fetched coffee and answered the phones and stuff. And that's kind of how I started there, and I've been there ever since. Wow. Yeah. So now you were you were up there, of course, before carpet. I just happened to be up there a couple of, uh, like a week ago when I was sitting down with Mark Milady on a campaign that uh, I had was involved in. But anyway, I hadn't been up there in a long time because you know, I used to work downstairs where they where they print money. Yeah. You know, and but and I but I go back to the days of Lincoln McGee when he used to be up at the editorial. Ah, uh, yes, he actually hired me. He it, was the city editor. At the yeah, time. Diane. Yeah. Great guy. If Wonderful I got a job city. there, sweeping floors, you think maybe I could get a column? <laughs> It's not like the old days. Is that, I don't know, is that a yes or a no? no or what? It's it's not like the old days in the Telegram and Gazette. Though. No, it's certainly not. What is that now? As you mentioned, you can walk around there now in your stocking feet. So you right. can? that's an advantage. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, like I go back. I mean, I go back. My first exposure to Telegram and Gazette was nineteen. 19, let me say, it was in Washington, 1976, Jack O'Connor called me up and working for Ed Brooke, and he said, I want to do a story on it. And I said, great. And he says, well, okay, what high school did you graduate from Worcester? I said, I graduated from high school in Philadelphia. Uh, okay, we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> but then Jack and I knew each other over the years. Uh, but now, who was, now, when you were, when you first started, did you see Stoddard? ever come around? Or how, no. long, how long are we talking? I, I've been at the paper for about 22 years. 
Wow. And he was, I think, a little bit before my time. And if he wasn't, I never saw him. He was up on the fourth floor. Okay. So. How about Steele? Uh, was uh, Steele the publisher at the time? Uh, he was, yep. Okay. I would see him every now and then. And, yeah. But, you know, we don't, you know, the little Hoy Toy reporters didn't really deal that much with the fourth floor. So, really? especially when you're a cub reporter, no, you don't really have that much contact with them upstairs. Now, uh, what about Bob Nemeth? Now, Bob Nemeth's interesting uh, background. He was a he was a street reporter out in Webster covering the police beat back yep. in the 50s. Yep, and he's still going strong. Yeah, yeah. He does his weekly column. Yeah, and, and, and George French. George French. I, I read a column that George French wrote in the 50s, and you look at people, I can't figure this out. But 50s? George, yeah, he, wrote, he was writing in the 50s. Is it time for this guy to, like, we move never on? Leave, though. No, they never. There was a lot of action zombies. in the 50s. There was a lot of corruption going on in yeah. the city. But you had, and you know, it was before the Telegram bought the Evening Gazette, which was owned by some other group. But the interesting thing is, when you look at, like, Bruce Bennett, you look at George French, you look at Bob Nemeth, these guys, I mean, what is it down there? I mean, nobody ages down there. <laughs> sure they do. We're, we're, we're they look old to me, though. man. I wish, you were, I wish you were right about that. But, well, you know, I think people stay at the Telegram. I mean, they they like it at the Telegram. I like it at the Telegram. Yeah. You know, it's not the New York Times. It's not the Wall Street Journal. But it's home, and I think it's a good paper. It's a medium-sized paper for New England, and I think we fill a good niche. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm happy there, and I think a lot of people are happy there. Now, I do miss George Griffin. Yes, we and all know George Griffin. Do, what's, what's he doing now? You know, Bill, I don't know. Really? Okay. I don't know. He, you know, like like a lot of people, he took the buyout when we right. were, when we were bought by the New York Times. A right. lot of really good people took a buyout, and it's regretful because we did lose a regrettable because we lost a lot of good people. We lost our city editor, we lost Jim Dempsey, we lost George Griffin, we lost right. a lot of good people. Right. I mean, it's now now let's uh, it, and just kind of give the culture of the Telegram and Gazette to a lot of people that are out there listening. Um, <laughs> You, you ask know, really hard questions. Oh, are you kidding me? No, I just, I just know. He doesn't know. ask any of the real the good ones, though. No, no, I just, uh, the culture of the telegram, I, mean, I just go back a long culture. ways. Well, the culture. It's culture. The I get, I get, let, me, let me give you yeah. a culture, right? No, it's, right. it's culture right. of the telegram. Right. Wait a minute, wait, wait. wait. Old? You mean like culture, rich like a petri dish culture? White. Well, That's no, the culture. No, old, rich, and white. And the, well, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just talking about the sense of the, the Telegram and Gazette. When you, when you look back, now, a long time ago, there used to be an editor, and I never got to meet him, but I used to see him down there once in a while, and the guy passed away. It was, it was a black black guy. Oh, they might have killed him. No, no, it was an older... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they might have killed him, Donnie. Yeah. But he was an older black guy, and I never got his name. I met him twice. I mean, this is a long time ago. This case is said, do his little editing, yeah, and I then he would disappear. I, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't I've know. been before my time. That we, that I'm you. old, though, but I'm not that old. Know, How old are you? Pardon me? How old are you? I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I'm 46. That's, uh, that's, that's so not old. That's now, 45. Now, 45. Now, now that's check, not old. Check this out. This October, I turned 50, and I don't know where the time went. Right. Yeah. I, know. I mean, yeah. October 20th, I turned 50. I do accept birthday presents. I, I used to like the two newspaper format that, uh, that well, I used to have. Yeah, but oh, that, yeah, it was great. You know, it encouraged a lot of competition, and I think um, it was a good thing to have two newspapers in the city. Absolutely. Yeah, they would have been getting a dollar twenty of uh, off of everybody a day instead of 60 cents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, remember, Lavallee's big issue was uh, the uh, when they started going to regions. You know, this section, that section. You just wanted one newspaper, mm-hmm. and now you've got different sections. You get the one star, two star, three star, four star. And at first, I wasn't crazy about it, but then uh, I got to see how people felt like it was their own newspaper. Yeah, I mean, the intent of it obviously is to focus on the news that people want in their own community. I mean, people in Webster don't really care that much about news in Auburn and vice versa, so we try to focus it on the area that people live in. And you know, sometimes we don't always succeed, but we, we try real hard. Yeah, Diane. Your newspaper column goes all over the place. Diane. Yeah, my, my column runs all editions. A lot of stories and a lot of different features in the paper do run what we call all editions, so all different zones get those. Right. Diane. You know what, I'm did having a hard time. Is that Herman? I am having that, a hard time. That's Herman's, Herman's, yeah. Herman's. Okay. I'm having okay. a hard time here in Herman's. Okay. That's all right. Listen, did you ever think of doing a radio show? You have a, you have a much better better voice for radio than you do your column. You have a very, <laughs> very good voice for radio. I'm not kidding. Uh, uh, no one's ever asked. You ought to know me by it. now. I'm not kidding. You know, well, I'm, you could do both. Are you, trying yeah, to you say her, both. are you trying to say her voice is better than her writing? I know, I think no, that was a kind of a left-hand compliment. You think so? No, nah, I'm not out to give anybody compliments. That's not my style. <laughs> well, if, if, the, if WTAG was still down there. But, hey, listen, the, hey, uh, that would be great to invite you to come on and do your, do uh, a nice little show and talk about some things. Uh, mm-hmm. You have a great radio voice. How's Wednesday Thanks. nights, Diane? Yeah, this this is Mike, Mike Roberts. Roberts. Me. Mike, yeah. Roberts is, uh, Mike Roberts is trying to sell you on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Coming in he needs somebody to do a show with me on yeah, Wednesday you know, nights. Mike is the head honcho now down here. Uh, yeah. Diane, Diane, 
He's looking for somebody to do a show with me on Wednesday nights. You think you could take the heat? I'm looking for someone to pay me. You there you There you go. Oh, come on. Get <laughs> real over here. There's no money over here. This isn't the TNG. <laughs> this is not a TNG. <laughs> this isn't the TNG. <laughs> All right. But tell me something, Diane, out there. And I, tell us about uh, your column and tell us about, you know, how you got into it and, and the direction that you've taken it. Well, my column runs three times a week, mm -hmm. Sunday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. I've been doing it for about 12 years, and I really had no idea where it was going to go when I started doing it. My only goal when I started was to fill the column three times a week, which when you're first starting out, it's kind of daunting. You know, I, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but um, I think it just kind of takes on its own voice and takes on a life of its own, and I don't really know how to describe my column. I mean, right. I kind of let other people do that, but I just try to write sometimes informative, sometimes entertaining, sometimes witty. Vicious. Sometimes witty. You know, I, just, I just try to, Vicious. Try to keep people entertained, I guess. Vicious. <laughs> What is he saying? Vicious. He saying vicious. She's saying vicious. Chicken hear me. He is saying vicious, isn't he? Chicken hear me. No, he's saying, no, I can't hear him. Okay. Vicious. The word vicious. It can be vicious at times. Vicious. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word vicious. I know you wouldn't. Right. Well, <laughs> you write it. She probably doesn't care who who says what about her column, as long as they read it. She's getting paid. I would call it edgy, Harmon. Edgy. Edgy. Not necessarily vicious. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. I can I go with edgy. Now, now, I remember uh, the column that you wrote uh, describing as a young girl uh, and Maggie May. You know, oh, the song? Yeah, getting in Because that song was such a controversial song to some people when most of us sit back and think, are you kidding me? I know. It's a bit funny to think of that now. <laughs> you know, and, well, you know, some of the stuff that Elvis Presley used to talk about used to be kind of crazy. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember listening to Maggie May. It was the first 45 I ever bought. I was probably in like the sixth or seventh grade. And I brought Maggie May, and my father walked by and heard the lyrics, and he just said, I feel so bad for your generation. <laughs> you know, he was like a Frank Sinatra, El Martino guy, and he couldn't believe we were listening to that. Well, i got to tell you, I'm listening to Frank Sinatra almost every day. My dad loves Frank Sinatra. I like Frank. Oh, yeah, he's great. You know, and then there's one song that everybody sings over and over again, uh, The House That I Built, mm -hmm. What America That's Means nice To Me. That's an incredible little song. Nice song. Yeah. But uh, now, now, how about that excitement that you can share with any potential journalistic person who may end up landing a uh, position? at a newspaper, the day that you got called in the office to, tell, to, to be told that you have this column, what was the sensation like? Oh, it was great. It was great, though. It was really exciting because I think about 13 of us applied when Paul Donald Valley left, and um, everyone wanted it. Because it, people want to be a columnist because there's a lot of good perks to it. Right. You make your own hours, you don't have to cover the zoning board meetings, okay. and you can write about whatever you want. And that, you know, I think that's one of the best perks mm -hmm. about it. You kind of become your own sort of boss, and you can kind of take the column in the direction that you want it to go. And at the time, I think, quite frankly, they wanted a woman, because we had never had a female columnist before. And luckily, I happened to be a woman. Yeah. So they picked me, and it was great. It's, I've enjoyed it ever since. How come you write so vicious at times for a woman? Women are warm-hearted, kind, <laughs> generous, loving, you know, caring. Bill? Yeah, no, go ahead. That's, that's Armas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't hear him. Gonna be on no, Armas yeah, is the guy. Armas is not a fan. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Well, can you tell? Yeah, he's, he, everybody's, 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 everybody's a fan. At least you're not right. everybody. All right. That's huh? okay, though. It's edgy, edgy. It's, it's, it's edgy. We like it's edgy. edgy. Yeah, it's okay. But, I mean, I, 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 enjoy the, uh, I enjoy the fact that, hey, you know, everybody comes back and forth, but I like the different columns. Have you counted how many columns you've done today? No, I haven't. <laughs> I've never you know, counted. Because you know something? I feel too old. Well, I'll tell you something. If you go to, uh, what is the library, and then you go to Newsbank, no, or, yeah, yeah, well, you guys get it free down there, but you can, you We know, get it free, too. Yeah, we get it free, but I'm saying every single column in Newsbank at the library <laughs> has the number of words in each column. Really? And it'd be interesting to, uh, you know, have somebody take on that task of saying how many words. That would be funny. That'd be fun, but, yeah. uh, you know, we're doing some fun stuff, but, you know, well, let me see, what, what's upcoming? What do you have upcoming for us? Um, well, actually, I, I don't really want to say what I have for this Sunday, but... Okay. Yeah, she's going to smoke Hermes Yannis in her next <laughs> <No>. time. <laughs> <laughs> edgy, edgy, just edgy, edgy, a little edgy. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to expose Hermes. Ooh, all right, I can expose myself. I don't need you, honey. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay well, listen, i got to run. Okay, well, listen, Diane, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. My pleasure, Bill. And we'll be in touch. Take care. Take care, bye-bye. Mr. America, Bill Coleman.
Thanks a lot, folks, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Here I am, Bill Coleman, along with Mr. Hermit Janis Jr. and Sam DeNero, making it all happen for you. Hey, Hermit Janis, yeah. yeah. well, I just want to I just want to thank uh, Diane Williamson for from the Telegram Gazette for coming on, doing a great job. And, thank you, uh, Diane. And <laughs> nice job, Diane. Diane thank you. Wait, we'll do fine. Uh, matter of fact, get up with something. Anyway, listen. It comes time in every edition of the uh, Talk of the Town program uh, that uh, you see uh, we have all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, it's and, a suit and, on uh, you. Yeah, so we're, we're about ready to join our web goddess, uh, who is the ever-loving Cheryl Rosen. Uh, very Let's give her a Okay, Cheryl, welcome to Talk of the Town. How are you? Our web goddess. Web goddess at WORConline.com. Hey, you know what, Bill? You know what I'm doing right now? I'm no. getting ready to stuff my face for as much as I possibly can for the next 24 hours. Sounds oh, like you're right. depressed. No, no, no. no, no I'm it's, just uh, getting ready to fast for the next 24 hours. Well, fast. The oh. only thing, the only, I'll tell you, if I, could, if I could trade off, you know, on religions. Now, figure it like this. Now, I heard this on The Daily Show. Now, Catholics, we you know we we get guilt trips all day long, all year long. Confession every week, uh, commit our sins, and then you know we got to go to confession. We and do all, it for two hours tomorrow morning. Two We're hours tomorrow morning, year. all your sins are forgiven for the year. Two hours. I go to confession. By the time they give me my penance for one week, it's two hours. Wow. On the knees with the rosary beads, wow. the joyful mysteries and the sorrowful mysteries, two back flips. And, and oh, but, but, but you know what, but we're even smarter because we realize that we not only ask for forgiveness for what we've already done, we ask for forgiveness for the stuff that we know we're about to do in that's, the next year. That's cool. Go. That's what, that's what I got to do. That's what we're talking that's about. That's what I got to do because you never know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm converted. Now, listen, now, just, just okay, you know, well, as we say on Friday, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat. But tell me something. Now, what's, what's the ritual tonight? What do you got? The ritual tonight? Yeah. Um, well, you you eat whatever you can at mm -hmm. sundown. You uh, you have your service, mm -hmm. and um, and then you basically you're not to do anything but pray and take it easy until um, sundown tomorrow night. Can you pull around? No, no, no. No, no, I'm serious. No, you, can't, you can't do nothing. But if you're, but if you're very orthodox, if you're very orthodox, you do things like you don't wear um, leather. You, right. so you'll wear like canvas sneakers, yeah. so, uh, and you don't carry anything. Uh -huh. um, there's as as you typically wouldn't on a Sabbath. You wouldn't drive. You wouldn't mm -hmm. do any work. Mm -hmm. Turn on your TV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, open your refrigerator door. Not even that. Um, I'm not that religious, right. so I do those things. But mm -hmm. of course, I wouldn't have a reason to open my refrigerator door on. Well, you're uh, fasting, right? I will be fasting. Yes. Okay. And well, we're going cool. to see how long my son can handle it. He, he hasn't quite decided, and he's not 13 yet, so he's got yeah. a little bit of time, but we'll see. Oh. That's interesting. It really is interesting. That's what she is. Okay, so listen, what do you... What do you have for tonight? Bill's right, dancing well, around the studio here, Cheryl. You ought to see this. <laughs> He's out of his mind. That's right. What do you have for us tonight? This is different. Okay, well, the first thing is if, huh? so if you go to crest.com, you will find where it has on the right-hand side, it says The Apprentice. If anybody watched last night, they saw where they did um, their vanilla mint toothpaste. Well, Everybody out there has a chance now to, uh, if you fill out the form, if you click on that and you fill out the form and you put down what you would do to market this toothpaste, they will send you a sample mm -hmm. of their new Crest Whitening Expressions Vanilla Mint Toothpaste. And they'll oh, use no. your idea and make millions of dollars. You know, this can. This that is actually, there is a contest going on, and you could be chosen to appear on The Apprentice final live show on December 16th right. and go to their VIP party afterwards. Oh, but right. e either, either way, just for sending this in, you will get a free sample of Crest Whitening Expressions Vanilla Mint Toothpaste. That's cool. All right, that's the first one. The second one I've got for you yep. is if you go to takemeaway.com. Is that Calgon? That is Calgon. Oh, I know that stuff. And yeah. if Carol. you click on free sample, yeah. you get a sample of Tahitian, Tahitian. Orchid um, Calgon. Tahitian Orchid Calgon. Right. All right. They send you a little girl to, to put that on you? Uh, I think you have to get your own. Uh, so, good luck with me that away. That could be a problem. <laughs> that could be a problem. 
How about Diane? Diane Williams, you still out there? Would you put that stuff on me? <laughs> no, don't hold your breath on I know it. Jeez. Okay, if you go to adwera.com, which is A-D-W-E-R-A dot com, you can click on where it says register, receive a free body butter sample. Body butter. Diane, you with me here? Body butter. All right. <laughs> and what it says on that website is Edware is dedicated to empowering women. Empowering women. To oh. blossom and thrive by finding your passion and walking in the plan that God has designed for you. You will glow into women of character and purpose. Wow. Hey, Cheryl, Cheryl, can I ask body you something? Butter on. <laughs> that's body, that's the butter, butter, body, body butter? Body butter. Oh, man. Cheryl, you got anything that grows here? <laughs> uh, Is there any websites that grow here? Uh, well, I, I can work on that for next week. How's that? Yeah, right, yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. I got one more for you if you go, and this is more of a serious site, if you oh, go serious. to Chest pain Diane, you're with us? You're hearing this? <laughs> chest pains, in case you get any. Go right ahead. If you go to chestpaincenters.org, you can click on um, order free health information today. Mm -hmm. And they have all kinds of things in there about heart attack beginnings and warnings. Mm -hmm. They have audio tapes that you can order for free, mm -hmm. videotapes, um, articles, kits, brochures, um, all kinds of information to help you um, learn more about... Um, Preparing case for a heart attack. attack. <laughs> yeah. He's laughing. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And especially for women out there, um, where they don't realize the symptoms are a lot different than in men, and mm. they don't realize it. And there is a very high incidence of women dying from heart attacks. As a matter of fact, the number the number has surpassed. <laughs> he knows the number. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I Bill had a few heart I attacks think. himself. No, 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 no. I, I teach this. Uh, no, the women have surpassed men in heart attacks. Like uh, 700, we have 700,000 heart attacks by women. Oh, really? They are. They, they're vicious. They I'm cause us heart attacks. I'm having a heart attack now. <laughs> the men are trying hard enough. That's what it is. So, uh, Cheryl, can you just hang in there for a quick break, and then we will... Uh, Actually, it's a long one. It's a long break. One. Hang in this, Cheryl. Diane, don't go nowhere. Right. I'm going to go eat. Okay, <laughs> you go eat. We will talk to you later. Oh, you take care. something for next week. Take All care. All right. All right, bye-bye. Hey, we'll be back, I guess, huh? Yeah, we'll be back after And what are we doing? Serving Central New England and the world? And the world. Call a paramedic. I'm having a heart attack. www.wrconline.com. This is Talk of the Town, and I'm not even going to mention who's here. Ah, yeah. Herman Sanders Jr. and Sam De Niro. Diane. Mike Roberts controlling the board. Diane. I know the Palmer didn't show up. Diane. Thanks, folks, for uh, joining us. Thank you for staying in tune with us. Ah, this is a cool show. Yeah, this is a great show. We got this is a nut house, Herman yeah. Herman Janis Jr., Sam yeah. De Niro, Mike yeah. is controlling everything. Yeah. And, it's, you know, Irm is doing the break. Uh, got a phone call from a woman who really wanted to put that lotion on. She offered, actually, to put the lotion on me. Yeah, no, she put nice, lady. Yeah, a nice lady. Nice so, so, lady. I mean, know. she scared, any, scared anybody, me to death. But, no, nice <laughs> nice lady. Very nice lady. Thank you for calling. Call, call back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, listen, Lord, I wanted to mention something before <laughs> we ahead. get going, because we're going, sure. we're, we're out we're there today. Out we're there. doing it. Yeah. But um, my good friend, Guy Glotus, I mean, you've probably heard of him, right? Somebody's, you know, guys have heard of him. Who? Seven. Anyway, he he did what we expected him to do. He stomped on John Mike Flynn. And, and that's okay, you know, that's okay, because Mr. Flynn should have left when, you know, when, when he, I mean, four or no, five, right, six he, years he, ago. He, However, what, what, what I find really, really appalling is that Mr. Flynn, a, a, a Democrat, and I've heard him speak probably a thousand times, and he's always one to say, you know, only in America, only in America, you know, it came up the hard way, God bless unions, God bless this, God bless the Democratic Party. Well, that little, uh, Worm. Well, that no, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll skip what I'm what I'm thinking. That little piece of work gave his headquarters to uh, a uh, a a Republican, to Bill McCarthy. Bill McCarthy. Bill McCarthy's got the headquarters now. Now, now, now. Correct me if I'm wrong. The the Democrats and Republicans alike, of old, you know, when when they got beat, you know, they they got behind the Democrat or the Republican. That lost, or the, yeah. the one, and, and, and you know the that party. That was thirty years ago. Then, but you know that that was that's the way to do things, right? Get behind the party and then do this for the party. Well, Mr. Flynn, you know the uh, the uh, blank 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 blank, is not only giving his uh, headquarters over to the Republican Party, 
he's also given a, a hell of a time to all the people up there at the jailhouse that uh, were supporting my friend uh, Guy Glotus. Well, well, the night after the election when he lost, he was being interviewed, I won't name this, the radio station, but he was asked if he would support Guy Glotus. Yeah. And he stuttered. To, he wouldn't answer it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they supported him all these years. Right. He should have came right out and said, I'm going to support Guy Glotus. Right. He lost fair and square. Right. He should have. He had the chance to get out while you know while he can. He should have passed the torch, and now he lost. What um, you know. Now what what I'm getting at is though know, years and years and years of saying you know he's a great Democrat and you know only in America. I mean, you know here's his opportunity to get behind a, a Democrat and help Sounds him like get Don in. Sounds like Don King. And he stabs him in the back. Sounds like Don King only in America. Stabs him in the back. Well, I got to tell you that just may be a temporary thing. In the temporary. Long the knife's in there. No, the he's mad because he lost. He lost and he okay. It was hard feelings. Will you stop trying to be so freaking hey, nice to people? No, no, no. We can have two different views. He wants him out. I think the sheriff. I think the sheriff is. He's, he's a dirtbag. Well, listen, I think the sheriff is going to take his time before he decides. He hasn't got he's much time. time. He shouldn't have had it. It's, it's a, it, no. and I, look, look, that was a hard-fought campaign. So you can't, you can't, I mean, listen, we all know, being politically active, that money talks. Mm -hmm. And 700, what are you, 700,000 bucks? Who? A guy. No, 600, you're way but he, right, Flynn, 600, Flynn, Flynn never had anybody right. run against him in a primary before, right. that's why. Well, but If somebody know, else had done that, they probably right. would have beat him. Well, Frank Bisha got 38% of the vote. But Frank Bisha... It was that was that Frank Bisha did not run against, run against right, right, right. Frank Bisha did not run against Guy Glotus. Right. That's right. And right. Guy Glotus said that that right. night after he was uh, won the primary, he said we're not taking Frank uh, Bisha uh, light. We're taking we're not taking him lightly. Right. He won 38 percent, but that's against right. that's what, against Flynn. Well, yeah. you know, we I had mean, that gentleman up here. Uh, uh, well, we had uh, that Bill McCarthy up here on the show right. a few weeks before the primary. You know, and he was a gentleman, and I let him put out his, uh, his his platform and let him speak to the people that he thought would support him or, or whatever, and I didn't, you know, ask any well, questions. I didn't badger him, but, you know, I find it kind of insulting that in, in, in the paper this past week, he comes out and takes a shot at Guy saying that he's not qualified. Now, well, let, me, let me just say, yeah. look, I, they're not qualified. qualified. That's campaign. Yeah, but you know what? Here's a guy that, that, that spent like four years as a state trooper, and... Um, <laughs> then he was down in Louisiana. No, no, well, well, then he went to Louisiana. In Louisiana. He was in Phil Philadelphia, and I believe on a police force in Philadelphia, and he's been pushed around and, and moved on. And, and, and from what I hear, honestly, he's been given the choice that, like, you leave or we have we have you leave. Well, they're going to so all, now, look, all that stuff but, but, is going to come but, out. But, but, but here's, what, here's my point. My point is he's saying that this guy is not qualified. Well, let me tell you something. Guy Glotus has done more in his two terms or three terms in the state senate and, and two terms in, in the house than Mr. McCarthy has ever done. And how can he say he's not qualified? Well, this well, is a whole different ball game being sheriff. He's going to be walking into a, a big mess well, let me if he gets that job let me up there. Well, if he gets the job. But, but let me Lotus, if he oh, gets the job, it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be a... Yeah. I'm, well, well, I'm glad you you're something. confident. I it's think, his. I think if Romney has his way, this will be our last... Romney? Yeah, listen. Just a yeah. clash of yeah. Waldo. Listen, Romney's going to be run out of town. Be, I think this is going to be our last elected yeah. sheriff. No. I really do. I, I think the position is going to be like Mike no. Donahue's position. Mike Donahue. Was once not elected a jerk treasurer. Bag. Well, yeah. he, he ran Guy Glotus' campaign. Who? Mike Donahue. Not Guy Glotus's. Yeah. No, he didn't. What, what planet do you which, want? Which, which campaign did he run? What planet do you want? He ran, he ran Flynn's campaign. Oh, uh, Mike Donahue ran yeah. Flynn's campaign? Yeah, another dirtbag. Yeah, yeah. two minutes it. left. I, oh, I think this is the last one. I can't even get him on two minutes. Ray Mariano, now there's a guy. Oh, Ray Mariano ran. He was getting $6,000 a week to write garbage. Garbage. I could have done that for free. You know, I could have I could have ran that nonsense for free. Would you agree with me on this? What? That Bisha would never get 38 percent against Glotus. No, that won't happen. What do you think's going to happen, happen in the final election? Well, uh, if it was Bisha and Glotus, Glotus would trounce him four no. to one, final five election. to one. Can we get all three of these guys up yeah, here? Yeah, the final election is going to be this: the two uh, uh, McCarthy and Bisha. My my prediction. I and uh, Frank Bisha to me, I like Frank Bisha. He's a good man. But we're talking about this campaign in, in the in the election. The two of them together are probably not going to bring in more than, say, 50,000 votes, and there'll be about 300,000 votes cast in that Well, race. what do you think is going to go? Okay, uh, look, let's say Kerry's taking the state for the presidential and probably will take the country, mm -hmm. only because I think the only thing that will make Kerry win the country is by peeping people feeling peeping that... No, no, by people <laughs> feeling that... Uh, Al Gore got robbed. Kerry's oh, behind yeah, in every... He, he got robbed. Anything to do with the robbed, he's got nothing to do with feeling. He did get robbed. Right now, Kerry's yeah. behind in every state, and he ain't going to be no, able to catch up. Well, no, he's not behind no, in every no. state. Some that's true. He's that's true. One that's a one poll. Here. One poll. Yeah. He's but, behind in one yeah. poll. But there's several polls that are putting him two and three points in right. there and all that. Can I make this point? This is going to be the last Republican governor you'll see in a long time. Thank God. Thank God. We're going to remember him for not coming down here and helping in that bus strike. Thank God. 
I want the people to remember that, that when it comes time for the governor's right. race, that we're going to get rid of that Romney because he didn't come down here and, and help for the bus strike. He's a well, howdy duty he, guy. Well, no, Romney thinks Worcester's a joke. Well, yeah. Romney There's Romney on the phone right now. No, he thinks Worcester's Give a joke. Give me that phone. I'll no, talk to him. Romney thinks Worcester's a joke. Romney they always thought Worcester was a joke. Yeah. They never came down to Springfield, Worcester, <laughs> or Greenfield and did anything for, for this part of the state. Yeah, I know. Well, they all think that this whole thing is a joke. They think the people in Worcester don't handle things. You know, do you think I'm tougher than Romney? Huh? think I could beat him up I'm, in a fight? Well, no, it's not beat him up. I don't <laughs> he's, a, he's a slasher. You gotta watch out. Slasher. <laughs> Waldo. Waldo okay. is his first name. Right. Remember that. Right, uh, Waldo. Well, listen, folks. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. This is Bill Coleman, Mr. Hermes Janis Jr. Go this Red Sox. Don't forget. Everybody, listen. Yankees. Who's up Yankees, Yankees are gonna pound. Yankees. Up. Yankees are, oh, Yankees are gonna. Yankees are gonna pound on the Red Sox right, tonight. Sox. Yeah. Kill the Red All right, Sox. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Bye -bye. Yay!